Two minutes, guys. Two minutes of time me Andrew Horowitz. Wait, what's that mean? That's like five minutes until Five Nights at Freddy's is real or something? Two minutes until Andrew Horowitz becomes real, guys. One minute until Andrew Horowitz becomes real. Hey. Hi! Oh my gosh! You're Sorry. here! Uh, Sorry, I was a little late. It's okay, I don't care. <laughs> How are you? Very cool. You got a, you have an MM full thing. Yeah. <laughs> I got wow. a, a blanket off of Redbubble, but you don't have to talk about that. <laughs> Your studio is so cool. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh just you know, working. So lost yeah. track. But uh yeah, huh? where are you calling from? Huh? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Pennsylvania. I live like oh. right outside Philly. All right, all right. All right, cool. Yeah. Um, is it okay if I record this? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. What is this? So it's like a, you're just interviewing for class project? Yeah, and... for school. Yeah, it's my senior project. So you're graduating soon? Yes, I am. <laughs> Congratulations. Where are you going to, where are you going to go to, are you going to college? I guess that's the yeah. question. I'm not going to college. Okay. What are you doing? Um, well, I'm trying to be a musician. I also really like YouTube. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's a hard business though. You kind of have to get lucky. With the YouTube stuff. So do, are you active on YouTube? Yeah. Yeah. I post like maybe like once a month. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I feel like it's good, generally a good idea for people to take time before if before they decide if they want to go to college because people just jump in and then once you're on that train it's hard yeah. to get off yeah yeah for real. yeah I um I'm actually homeschooled I haven't really been in public school since seventh grade so I don't know if like in a college environment I'd even be able to do it <laughs> at yeah. this point yeah um you'd be able to do it I feel like it's uh it's important for like life connections and um and yeah, it's where you meet a lot of people that will be part of your community. Yeah, I agree. But I mean there. honestly, I'm kind of like hoping of like moving to Ann Arbor in like a few years. So like maybe I'll just like get the college experience without actually going. <laughs> Why don't you just go to school true apply to school? It's expensive. <laughs> you can get a scholarship, you know. True. <laughs> yeah. Are you? I mean, you're in Pennsylvania. There's probably some great, uh, great. There are great schools outside of Philly. Yeah, we have Penn State, Drexel. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't know. Um. So yeah, what can I? Uh, how can I help you? I guess. Okay. So. Let's see. I have a list. Okay. So the first question, what have you been up to? Any production, solo, or personal life things you'd like to share? Um, what have I been up to? Uh I um I don't know how much I like can like wanna go on record with what I'm doing, but I uh um short of it is I started a record label a few years ago. I don't oh. I keep it um kind of separate from Tally Hall. Mm -hmm. Uh and uh, we release mood music, so anything you listen to passively. Um, if you're like from jazz to uh, classical, neoclassical piano to guitar, mm -hmm. uh, lo-fi beats, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, that's kind of occupied a lot of my time. Um, cool. And then uh, I like uh, been working on some like getting my piano chops up. I'm trying to uh my goal is to put out some classical music um in the next year and then i'm oh, um, so awesome oh, working on i'm working on new I, i've been working on new songs forever but uh it's just uh need to find like the right spark to finish that project yeah 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 i'm gonna rush it and i don't need to so yeah anyway yeah so 10 years between records or 12 12 years between records that's you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um kind of like not really related but kind of related were you in any musicals in high school i played um uh piano and did like some musical direction for oh. musicals in high school um we did like we did the baker's wife and side by side by sondheim charlie brown okay. 
Yeah, I did that kind of stuff, but I would never, um, I'm not an actor. Oh, yeah. Or a singer for that part. I, I, <laughs> I mean, I sing, but not like, I can't sing that kind of. I can see you doing it. Nah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, You were the only member of Tally Hall who grew up out of state in New Jersey. What made you want to go to the University of Michigan? I was looking for, um, at the time, a place where I could study music seriously, but also like just have a normal college experience. Yeah. Um, so it kind of took out all the conservatories because then you're like super locked into music kids. Um, and uh, Michigan had like the best of both worlds. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was between there and Northwestern for me. And I guess I was destined to be go to U of M. I yeah. <laughs> it's a great school. So yeah, I'm I'm very glad you did. Um, you went to the BMI Pop Awards for winning the John Lennon Scholarship for Good Day. What was it like there? Were you nervous? Um at the time I wasn't nervous because I didn't have to do anything. Um I was like a little kid in like in a situation, in a more grown up situation. I guess uh yeah, it was like a big deal at the time. Uh and I think um, looking back is like the best thing that came out of that was validity because like when you're starting as a musician, all you want is um, for people to like, be like, you're good, keep doing it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, with the writing and Tally Hall, we were always just like, are we good? Or please, please someone listen. Like, you know, you're basically like, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. And people are like, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> any little thing you got like that was that was definitely validating yeah 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 didn't you get to meet brian wilson there yeah i did meet him there um we have a weird picture where he looks like a ghost <laughs> like, a little bit i mean yeah i i don't know about you i go through phases where i like am like obsessed with different music like um like uh i, I get through phases so at that time i was in there you go yeah <laughs> I was in the Beach Boys phase and I like, mm -hmm. you know, was reading books on them, listening to everything ad nauseum. And uh, mm -hmm. it was cool to just be like, oh, I like, I can do all that, do all my homework. And then I get to go actually meet the guy. Yeah. Like, right. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I, I had a huge Beach Boys phase. They were like my favorite for years. The, th the thing about that is like, when you look back, I'm like, I didn't spend any quality time with him. I didn't have a combo with him. It's like a yeah. handshake picture like a little big deal yeah. <laughs> doesn't really mean anything but <laughs> it was cool you seem like you listen to a variety of different music what have you been listening to lately that's a really good question um I I listen to so much music through my label that I kind of get burnt out on listening but mm -hmm. say my friends my friends are staying with me at the moment we're pulling out records um he's my friend's a vinyl expert so we're just listening to uh uh, we're listening to Weezer Blue album. <laughs> and that's the Weezer album. Karen Dalton, if you know her, she's pretty amazing. Old school. And um, then we were just, like, I think we just listened to uh, an alternate version of Honky Dory, uh, David Bowie, um, because I, they started releasing those like alternate versions of albums mm -hmm. a few years ago. And I, I love them. Like, um, if you listen to like rumors uh fluid mac like i love rumors oh my gosh yes it's like basically the same album but then like the vocals are a little different and the some of the licks are just a tad off or the drumming's yeah. a little bit stranger um and it's it's pretty cool to hear that like because you know when you listen to records so much you like get used to things and yeah. then when yes. they throw you off with like a different vocal thing you're like what yes oh i have to so, check that out this is you're cool. just checking that out um but i yeah, i couldn't be like oh yeah i love this new band that it's blowing my mind i don't really have that at the moment yeah yeah i feel that what genre of music do you typically gravitate towards for your own music or production or for your personal liking um definitely probably classic rock still and uh i do I used to listen to a ton of jazz. Now I still listen to a ton of jazz, but a lot of it's for my label, so it's less exciting. I just, I, it's like I'm a little, it's a little, it's a little much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the very moment I'm listening to classical piano to just, but more to study. 
Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I could, I, <laughs> so classic rock is my comfort zone. Yes, classic rock. Classic rock is my favorite. Yeah, I love like all, all you know, the, the good albums. Yeah. I really like um what else do you have in your walls? I you keep on looking at your walls. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have um yeah. Well I have a lot of the Beach Boys. I have some Beatles. Um wait, is that it for that wall? I have some monkeys up there. <laughs> okay. I wish I had some like, you know, David Bowie, Fleetwood Mac, other classics, but those are so expensive. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um Oh, this is, I don't know why I put this one next, but I wanted I wanted to ask you about um the Southwest Southwest episode where um you were on the ladder talking about welcome to now and then like the guy pushed you like can you talk about that? Um what was that? Okay, so yeah, it was like an ongoing sketch in it, the internet show. And I guess it was the idea was that there's all these organizations that don't really stand for anything. They're just very vague. So we made the vaguest of vaguest <laughs> organizations. And um, I think that night, to be completely honest, I think I was, a, a, I had liquid courage in my body and uh, be, trying to be an, be annoying and get, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that was unexpected, that thing. But That's just fun. we got it all on film, so it worked out. <laughs> You didn't have to go to jail. Yeah. Um. What What is Welcome to Now? Because like, if you if you like look up Welcome to Now dot org, it's like gives you like ten million viruses. <laughs> yeah, I think we should have we should have continued that website, but I think we lost it. Um. But uh, yeah, it was it was like a bunch of nonsense on a. I feel like we put a lot of time into building it, though. It was very detailed. Oh, really? Um. But yeah, it's just it was it was just a vague organization that didn't mean anything. <laughs> like being being present and aware, you know. Yeah. Some new age yeah. stuff that doesn't actually have any substance. Yeah. <laughs> that was the idea. Um, what was it like being in Tally Hall? Take me through a day of your life in two thousand seven. Whoa, um, that was. I mean. It was phases. So 2007, we didn't put out the re-release yet. Mm -hmm. We're probably, I'm guessing we were in this, we were like, things were starting to happen. So it was probably exciting. It was pretty, it's it's pretty intense being in a band. I think, um, like, I don't know. I like, I'm at this point in my life where I like see all these young bands and I can give advice and I know exactly what they're doing wrong and stuff. But Mm -hmm. when you're in the situation, like, it's easy. One thing that I see all the time is people not taking themselves. They're t- treating it like a job. Like, mm-hmm. and uh, I think if you want to do any, like, parting is fun, but that's not what we were doing. We were like working. Yeah. Um, and it didn't seem like work. It was like fun, you know, but at the end of the day, like, you're scared that like, you won't be able to pay your bills and mm-hmm. this, there's no career path. So you're yeah. going to be on on the streets in a couple of years and then you also have like um yeah there's pressure to build the business but like if i mean if you you have to treat it like a business so yeah, yeah. i think we're having fun but like in 2007 but we were working really hard and um there was always something going on it was yeah it was a mix of really high intensity and um uh then just I guess we did that. We had fun. Yeah. I think in 2007, I was living with Rob, too. We had a giant Yeah, in that, in that house, right? Yeah, we had a, a big house that was owned by a church. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was, when I was in Ann Arbor, my Airbnb was, like, two streets away from that house. So I was literally walking, I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Yeah, and I came across it, and I was like, that's a house. Yeah, great house. Um, it was a good, yeah that was an interesting time it was fun <laughs> good fun yeah um so what was the process of the internet show like there's not that much information about like how it was made like did you have like a designated job for it did you do a lot of writing or recording you know had to like contribute we were very much like 
to a fault where like everybody has to be uh contributing mm -hmm. um but yeah we we got the budget to do it and then we thought we'd have help putting it all together but everybody was basically like here's money go do your thing and we're like oh but we don't know how to produce this and you have to do it legally and get permits and stuff so oh, yeah. a lot of time to do all um it was a lot of time it was very very all-consuming for like a year year and a half of like uh i remember just like buying props at uh a thrift store and then returning them the next day because we <laughs> needed to save money um, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of that kind of stuff and a lot of a lot of planning a lot of planning um yeah. we, should have had, we should have hired a couple of producers to like work that stuff out but instead we didn't know what we were doing so yeah well it turned You're out <laughs> And then we it came out and no one really cared and we were like that was what? no yeah. coming from someone in the fandom that's like one of like the top things like I'm always watching the internet show. <laughs> but I'm just telling you we put it out and like the label didn't really get it or want to get it and we put it out and there was no views and we we're like oh well I mean not no views but a couple thousand and we we're like wow we just spent a year and a half on this, um but over time it started like making more sense and uh yeah it's cool because now. It's like a remnant of the internet, his internet, uh, and uh, a lot of the like once in a while, one of those skits will become relevant and it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think you'd be doing now if Tally Hall never existed? I have no idea. I might. Yeah, I I think my path was music, mm -hmm. so I might be a. I might have wound up at like, uh, being a pop producer which I did a lot of but like really being involved in that or uh I maybe I would discover that I didn't want to do music and did something else you know yeah yeah well my yeah. next question is would you ever want to do something non-music related uh yeah definitely one day um and that kind of even though I run a record label now it's still like less um business it's more business than music i would say yeah 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 um which is fortunate and unfortunate it's a little bit draining but uh yeah music's yeah. a really tough career is yeah. if, if you know it that way um yeah. the only way to do it is if there's nothing else you can do or want to do like really nothing else yeah, yeah. that's that's yeah. right <laughs> Yeah. yeah, my my dad is in. Well, my parents are musicians, and my dad is like he has a booking company and all that. So I kind of know like a little about the industry. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's the most brutal of brutal. Um, and uh, yeah, I've seen so many people come and go, and some some people. Yeah, most most people I knew early on, don't do, still do music. They they dropped out, and they, there's no shame in it too. It's just so brutal, like uh not being like reliant on like my 20s I did not have a lot of money like mm -hmm. everything was like yeah it's it, it, like everything's a struggle you're like and, and you live in a crappy place and you have you like can't do nice things a lot of times and um it's uh it's it's like a sacrifice that when you're not doing it like that you're like oh wow life can be easier <laughs> 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 to be the hardest thing in the world yeah um, like the reality of music and I tell us I, I mean no one no one wants to hear any music I feel like that's a reality that we live in yep yeah so I that's, like so many artists that are trying to like get big are like promoting on TikTok because that's kind of the only way now but um, yeah I figured I wouldn't ever do that <laughs> pretty brutal um it's not about being a good the best musician or it's about like being able to promote yourself properly and having the right look and being in the right pl people person, like all yeah. sorts of things. Yeah. Which is, wasn't always the case, but now that's the thing. It's, it's pretty, it's, it has a tough industry. Yeah. Wouldn't re don't recommend it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> to nobody actually. <laughs> Who are your biggest musical or life influences? Yes. Uh, I man, I don't know. I don't know. Everything. Everything's an influence, right? Um, 
I hated that answer, but people, when people say that, that's kind of the thing. I don't like, you know, like, oh yeah, that's, um, musically, like, I have my musical heroes that I feel like I drew on over time, uh, and those are, like, in the top producer world, John Bryan, in, uh, you know, jazz, uh, Bill Evans, Brad Meldow, um, Thelonious Monk's huge influence, Oliver Nelson. I'm just going to name names and you can look them up if you want. <laughs> but uh, Pascal Ravel is like a huge thing for me. Bach, I, I'm a Bach, Bach fanatic. Um, and Rock, it was like, I, 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 I like have so much adoration for like Zeppelin and mm-hmm. the Beatles, obviously. Um, those are the two probably bands that are like respect the most but you know also like stones and William mac and csny all that stuff yeah, yeah. um and then uh writing wise like i was huge e cummings buff um i am very particular about uh like um ling- language when written and, like our uh punctuation and all that stuff and that so that's that he he is like he's a master of that um yeah i always loved like i don't know roll doll that kind of stuff yeah yeah i'm not gonna give you any heavy names because i don't really have them in the shirt then i'm like oh uh but yeah i don't know i don't just <laughs> people's um, how do you experience writer's block and how do you push through it with songwriting? Um, I think when I was in college, I, Philip Glass came to, to, uh, to Michigan for a week and spent time with us, and uh, uh, the composition student sort of, and he was always like routine. He's like uh, seven to 12 every day or something like that. He's at his piano no matter what. If you can write great if you can't great but he's always doing that i think all the like successful um i think writer's block is a little bit nonsense it's like just you work or you don't work um this easy it's easy to hide behind like oh i'm not feeling creative but it's kind of all nonsense (laughs) um that said i i for me it's motivation like i don't have at this very moment i'm trying to find the motivation to do stuff Mm -hmm musically and that's that's my personal struggle um but uh yeah writer's block is yeah I, I just doing is is the thing yeah yeah I'm trying to get past that I I, I really want to write songs that's the thing I've struggled with the most mm-hmm. you know I'll just like I'll just get stuck and then I like, can't push through it it's very well, then move on to the next thing and continue yeah yeah and put it aside or force yourself to do it or bring in a collaborator yeah 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 i should do that doing Um, something what advice do you have for beginner songwriters (laughs) (laughs) Uh, listen listen and practice and collaborate yeah yeah because you trying to imitate like listen like what about the songwriters that you like is interesting or to, how do they structure their songs like what makes the song what makes a good song to you yeah yeah like really learning it um i always was a fan of like actually understanding music which most people don't and you'll see tons of professional songwriters that don't mm-hmm. um i think the more tools you have the better so like if you really want to be a professional songwriter knowing like keys what some says let's try this in d and go to the four four chord on the bridge or something like knowing that will speed up your thought process and be yeah. able to communicate your ideas better yeah. um so uh yeah and that's 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 a solid answer <laughs> Um, I really love your solo album. What was your inspiration for sketches? It's different from your artistic choices on songs from Tally Hall. I think I was like a record. Like I, when we were, we stopped like actively touring and creating, uh, I needed some, like I needed to kind of prove to myself that I could do it. 
-hmm. So I think that was kind of a way for me to learn production and get comfortable as an art, like a, as an artist, gain a little confidence at the time. Um, and there were also songs that I had sitting that were never going to work for Tally Hall mm -hmm. uh, for one reason or another. And, uh, yeah, um, I think it's just more my voice. Like when you get like, you know, three of us have solo albums now. So you kind of hear them and you're like, oh, that's like a lot of this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, when we're all together, you kind of kind of hear a little, you can kind of hear where people come in a little more, you know, Yeah, yeah. So with their voices. So I would say my stuff is like definitely in between Rob and Joe. Yeah. Uh, or, and uh, I kind of steered Rob more towards Joe and Joe more towards Rob. And it's, that's kind of my space. Yeah, yeah. Was there a reason that you decided to remake sketches? Um, yeah, I just got better at what I was doing over the years. So if I was like, <laughs> if I'm going to not just have it on a cassette tape, which is the original idea, I was like, is something going to be personal? To, it's a personal thing that I created by hand. It was shipping to people as a tape cassette. And that was cool, cool to me. But I was like, if people are actually going to listen to this, I'm going to put it online. I might as well, like, tighten it up a little bit. Yeah. I didn't really remake it. I did a couple a couple things that needed to be done. Like I replaced drums on one track. Um and I fixed some vocal stuff that was like messy that I didn't know how to do when I was originally doing it and I could do it now. So I was like, why would I have mistakes like that? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It was I'm glad I did that. Uh cleaned it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you did too. It's very good. I I listen to it all the time. Daisy Fingers is my favorite. Oh, so good. <laughs> what is? Daisy Fingers. Oh, okay. Thank my you. Favorite. <laughs> do you do you have a favorite machine at Marvin's? <laughs> or like a favorite area? I, I went through this. So so cool. I haven't been there in a minute. Uh probably. I just can't really think. <laughs> I don't know. I like uh this is something I would always do. I obviously have to do the spaghetti thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been there in a minute. <laughs> yeah. But I think they probably kept it changes every, a little every time we go, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh we saw um a space where like you and Joe took a picture once, me and my best friend, and we were like, oh my god, we have to recreate it. <laughs> it was it was really cool. Well, uh cool. What was your favorite thing there? Um... Is it what you expected? It was, yeah, I honestly, I went, if, if you go on Google Maps, you can actually go in. So like, I like kind of saw it already, but yeah, it was, it was really, really cool. I was really upset though that, um, well, some of, some of the machines are a little run down. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's this one, I think it's like a music maker or something, but it like, you can't, you can't work it anymore. Mm. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like the piano. Yeah. So Marvin used to like wander, he would be there all the time and he would, he would be obsessive about fixing stuff. And he was, he was really, that was his life. So yeah. when he passed, his son doesn't have that quite that same passion. He doesn't, or curiosity of it. So he keeps it open and he does, I think like he puts himself into it for sure, but it's not, um, it's not the same as like when Marvin was mm -hmm. doing it yeah yeah oh do you I, I saw an interview where you said that you guys had the love tester at your house but like you had to you couldn't buy it so you had to give it back do you know where it is now <laughs> oh, I don't know I remember he wanted like I want to say nine hundred dollars for it we what like, wait that's crazy we we're like we couldn't afford it we we're like it's not practical so uh it's probably he has a lot of machines in storage and I don't know what happened to that and he also had a uh his house was full of crazy stuff yeah he had like I mean we have a we we I think there was the internet we did that mini documentary on him but his yeah. house had yeah. stuff like that was really inappropriate that we were not we did not film um <laughs> we we're like yeah 
he's a crazy person <laughs> but yeah really charming no guards uh up. if you google him and like look at some of the articles on there's a couple articles out there and you're like oh wow i didn't really expect that from marvin <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, when I was there, I could really see um, like the inspiration that you guys took from that place. It was really just, it was very cool and very interesting to see like the original thing, you know? Yeah, it's cool that it's still there. Um, yeah. They were going through some troubles during the pandemic, but they made it. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And Arbor, like, I just, I, I can't, I'm going to go back this summer. It was, it was basically like, Disney for a Tally Hall fan. Me and my me and my best friend were driving um back from the thrift store and we passed by the um Henry Muffin house. I was like, wait, hold on, wait, is that the car? <laughs> yeah, that was so cool to see. I didn't even expect or knew like where it was. But... Yeah, I don't remember where it is. <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. And then of course I had to go and recreate the same thing. <laughs> um Speaking of Ann Arbor, what is your favorite thing to order at Zingerman's? I remember oh, you said that I should go there. I think the Turkey Reuben was my jam. I missed that place. Oh, yeah. It was really good, yeah. Why did you choose to become a producer? And do you have any producers? I think you said, you know, some producers, but. um, uh, Why did I choose? I didn't, like, I just kind of fell in it. So when we were doing all the, over the course of being in the band, like, we all got pretty decent at production, just we were perfectionists and kind of knew what we wanted places. Um, and then after that, it just made sense. And I kind of fell into it. I met a kid who was like, I think he was 16. And he, uh, when I was in New York, I was, I think I was working on sketches. I was a little bit lost. And he was a, it turns out he was like this huge Tally Hall fan. And um, he wound up like introducing me to a producer uh who was starting the John Legend project and mm -hmm. we, uh connected and I made myself useful in that situation and um that's kind of started taking me down the path of production and uh basically apprenticed for him for four years yeah. so yeah and then you just take your own it takes on a life of its own people start being like oh you produce blah blah and mm -hmm. uh just got better and better at it and uh yeah. What's crazy though is like any kid these days could get really good at it. And I've seen it at like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't develop the music aspect of the thing. So they're like lacking in the most important thing, I think, is the music. But yeah. uh in terms of like skills and product and ability to record and engineer and all stuff, it's insane how good you could get. Yeah. 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 And a lot of them, most of them are probably better than me, to be honest. That's not... I doubt that. No, it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's fine. I'm I'm at peace with that. Um, do you have any tally hall moments that you look back on fondly, whether that's achievement wise or memories of the band wise? Um yeah, a lot of stuff. I mean, it was like all right, my whole twenties, you know. Yeah. So uh and I think it's something that's always like because uh, people like you like still listen to it and make, keep it relevant uh, <laughs> it's like I am where we're living it it's always like part of everything yeah uh, so yeah like every day I'll get some sort of it's a daily daily reminder I'll get uh, a few emails or like a uh right now I'm dealing with we so for the first time we have two gold records that have to get certified um uh the bidding and hitting the sand because they've gotten so many streams wow. um so i'm dealing with that at the moment there's always like something you know yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and yeah it was it was a good yeah it was a good time but we weren't like there was a different time and uh but uh yeah we, we it was a lifelong commitment you know yeah. Oh, I did want to ask about Bora because there's there's no information like where where did he come from? Like, was he friends with one of you? Like, uh, from what I can remember, he was like a fan. Um, oh, really? Also, super uh, super talented and doing his own thing. And I think we 
connected at some point and he got befriended and got he got involved mm -hmm. yeah he's he's like a jack of all trades like whatever he does he does well yeah yeah i've noticed yeah. that if you ask him like bora like we need like to cook lasagna for 100 people he'd be like i'm on it and then he'll, <laughs> out and he'll do a good job but like he'd always just like figure out what needs to be done and be, and get good at it so he he made himself useful to us and mm -hmm. became you know transitioned basically from like fan to a friend to uh, mm -hmm. uh yeah to part of a, the whole thing yeah yeah that's so cool for so cool um what was the inspiration uh for a whole world and you what is it about i don't remember <laughs> But I definitely wrote that for tour orchestra. I, I know we needed uh had that whole thing going and I needed material. Um, so I would just like write a ton of material. Mm -hmm. I remember that one really quickly. Oh really? Probably like, oh, I was in New Jersey and I was like it was probably like, oh, I have a rehearsal like tomorrow with a group and I need another song. So I just like sat down and came really quickly. Sometimes it happens like that. Dang. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, Vernon you is definitely one of the fan favorites I've noticed. <laughs> well, it's yeah. So good. Um, because it's unpretentious. Huh? It's, I think it's because it, it, it like survives because it's unpretentious. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, like, yeah. Um, so I have two more questions. If you, if you never had to worry about making money or anything, you could do anything at all. What would you want to do? Um, I don't, I really don't know. That's a really hard question. <laughs> That's a question I ask myself. Yeah, I don't know. You don't know. Yeah, yeah. The last thing: Do you have anything you want to say to the Tally Hall fandom? Um, that thank you for listening, and I'm. Um, it's really like it's an honor to have people uh, honor honor to still reach people after all the time mm -hmm. really is. yeah um, you could spend your time doing anything you could listen to whatever you want you could watch whatever you want mm -hmm. there's so much out there so uh yeah. it really is uh special yeah. and it's not lost on us at all <laughs> yeah. yep anyway that's all the questions i have <laughs> cool well good this Talk so, to you. Um, yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for doing this. I, re I really look up to you like so much. Tally Hall has shaped me as a person for the better. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wish you luck in your journey. Uh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. You don't know, quite know what you're doing yet, but yeah. <laughs> um, learn yourself. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Consider school at some point. It's it is I do think it is important. Yeah. Um yeah, you never know. You never know which path you'll go down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well.